a ching, a ching, a ching, a ting, a ling, a ling. My money did tinkle and jingle when I was singly single, but I married a wife, well then, well then, I married a wife, well then. I married a wife, she's a plague of my life, and I wish I was single again, again, I wish I was single again. A plague, a plague, a plague, a hag, a hag, a hag. My wife is a plague of my life, the plague of my life is my wife. But my wife, she died, oh then, oh then, my wife, she died, oh then, my wife, she died, oh then. I cried to think I was single again, again, to think I was single again. She died, she died, she died. I cried, I cried, I cried. I cried when she died, I cried and cried and cried. <laughs> but I married another, oh then, oh then, I married another, oh then. I married another, she's worse than the other, I wish I was single again, again, I wish I was single again. She's worse, she's worse, she's worse. A curse, a curse, a curse. She's worse than the other, the devil's grandmother, I wish I was single again. Congratulations, 1996. Uh, it's been a great first-class year. In fact, it's been a great four years together. 
And Gracie and I want to wish all of you the best as you now go to your separate assignments uh, throughout the world. We hope that uh, this video will be a wonderful reminder to you of not only your first class year, but also your graduation time, and that you'll continue to stay in touch with us as to how things are going and the great successes that you're achieving. All the best to you from Gracie and from me. Class of 96, congratulations. You've been a great first class. I really appreciate how much you taught me in my first year as a commandant. You really were core leaders. You'll do a great job out in the Army. I'd give you two points of advice. Focus on the soldiers that wear this uniform every day and don't settle for mediocrity. You'll be great. I look forward to hearing about you and serving with you again in the future. We just set the stage. That's great. Tammy Fonsons. I are you and Tammy's grandmother. I'm sorry. Congratulations to James Smith. Fred Toady. Fred Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Nice to Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Mike Beckwith. I'm going to be graduating, I guess, pretty soon here. Pretty excited. Um, I'm from Great Falls, Virginia. I'm really enjoying the punch. I like the cookies, too. And I'm looking forward to seeing my parents and, uh, and uh, graduating in a few hours here. Hi, I'm Aaron Lindstrom, and I'm from Jackson, Michigan. I'm the same company as Mike, Company B1. And obviously, I'm pretty excited about graduating, too. I just want to thank God for the opportunity to go here and to make it through. Toby Prudham from uh, <laughs> Opelousas, Louisiana. Uh, I'm in F1, and I'm really excited about graduating. I'm Cadet Eric Noe. I'm from Hayes of Green, Alabama. Uh, I, had the, I had the good fun of running in Sandhurst this year. I'm excited about graduation. I think uh, 96 is, is an outstanding class. Uh, I can't wait to get out there into the Army with, uh, with my friends and fellows, and I think I'm going to miss not too terribly much here at the Academy, but uh, I think it's been fun in some ways for over the four years, and I've learned a hell of a lot. So uh, goodwill and good luck to the Class of 96. I appreciate uh, everything that everybody's done for me to get me through here. All right, uh, my name is uh, Nick Jaskolski. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, just excited to be uh, graduating, uh, graduating this year with all, with all my friends. I'm going to be commissioned into the Armor Branch and uh, heading off to Fort Riley, Kansas. And, uh, can't wait to do it. My name is Mary Alfred Okia, and um, I'm really proud to be able to graduate from here. It's been a long four years, but it's gone by pretty fast. I plan to be able to <clears throat> go out into the Army and do good things. I'm really sure that the Academy has prepared me for whatever I'm going to face and I'm just happy for all my friends and my family that are out here to be with me at this time. Hi, my name is Rebecca Dam and I feel great about graduating. It's been a long four years, arduous task, but I'm really glad to be going out in the Army. Hello, I'm Jacques Bana and I'm really excited about graduation. I'm from Cameroon and uh, I think it's a very special time. I don't think I'll be able to realize what it is until I go home, and I'm really looking forward to go home in Cameroon and uh, to do good, a good job in the Army, and uh, it's been a good four years at West Point. Thank you. Uh, my name's Andy Shannon. I'm from Chestertown, Maryland. Um, I'm going to be going down to flight school with Dave. We're really excited about that. Uh, as for graduating, we really can't believe it. It just seems like yesterday we started, so we're both really excited. Uh, my name's Kidd. Gary Boone, uh, super excited about graduating. Uh, as far as what I'm going to miss the most, probably going to miss having somebody to put me to bed every night at midnight. <laughs> I'm Cadet Matt Hennigan, and uh, I don't know, the thing I'm going to miss the most about West Point are the people I met, all my friends. So we're all going to go to different places around the world after this. Probably the least is academics. That's a relief to get out of here finally. Hello, my name is Mark Schaefer. I'm from Los Angeles, California. 
I'm here with my older brother John and younger brother Eric and the rest of my family and friends. Uh, I've had a good to hear time here at West Point and uh, I'm really looking forward to what God has in store for me in the Army and just life beyond. So I'm excited and, and glad to be graduating. So we're here sharing a nice day and there's good times ahead as well. Hi, I'm General Lampkin, the Dean of the Academic Board. I want to congratulate you on a job well done. You've worked hard these four years. You've done well. You're, now you're graduating. You can look back on these four years with pride. You've accomplished a lot. You've completed one of the most challenging academic programs that this country has to offer, and you've done very, very well. Now you need to start looking forward to the future. We've given you a basis for growth, but it's up to you to continue that growth. You need to continue to grow academically and intellectually so that you be, remain relevant as a leader and uh, that you remain current in what you do. For you to be a good leader and somebody that's trusted, you need to be knowledgeable and educated, and you need to continue to grow as the future unfolds. Congratulations on a job well done, and good luck and Godspeed in the future. Okay, well, uh, my name is Cadet Kunitaki. First name is Brian. We're both class of 96. I'm just happy to be getting out of West Point, be graduating. I'm looking forward and really excited about getting into the Army and uh, leading a platoon of men. And, uh, you know, I just can't really describe uh, exact feelings with it. It's something I've been looking forward to, you know, for four years at West Point, and I'm ready and I'm excited. Hello, my name is Andrea Scott. I'm from California. Um, I'm really excited this week. It's kind of hard to imagine that four years have gone by so quickly. Um, I'll be going to Fort Hood as a medical service officer, and I'm most excited about just learning about my branch and um, just learning about being a leader and actually having some responsibility. Um, this is a really great week for us, and I look forward to going to the Army. My name's uh, Cadet William Doubt. Uh, I'm from Salem, Oregon. Came here four years ago, not expecting what I got, <laughs> and, uh, but I made it. I think the thing that I'm going to miss most is my friends, uh, football, and just being with my buddies, hanging out, having a good time. I'm most excited about flight school. I'm headed to Alabama, Fort Rucker. I'm looking forward to flying, being with my family. I'm getting married June 22nd. That's a, a lot going on in this month for me, so I'm excited. This is Tom Novak. I am, uh, I'm Tom Novak, Kid. and I would say that uh, my number one thought on graduation day is going to be all the people who supported me, mainly my friends and uh, my parents. And uh, I think I'm the only kid here who, whose dad wrote him a letter almost every single day that he, he was at the academy. And uh, if I had to do it over again, even though there were a lot of rough times, I'd do it just for all the great guys who I met. My name's Emily Edson. I'm really excited about graduating, as everyone is. Uh, I'm from New Hampshire, and afterwards, I'm going to be in Medical Service Corps. And I'm going to Alaska, I hope, Fort Richardson. So that'll be fun. And um, this summer, I'm going to be traveling to Russia, so I'm really excited about that. It's my roommate. Hi, I'm, my name is Carmen May. I'm from Hershey, Pennsylvania, and I'm also excited for graduation. Like my roommate said, um, I guess mostly we're both just kind of looking forward to getting out of here, but we'll miss the people we're leaving behind. And um, I chose engineers as my branch, so I'm going to OBC at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and then to Fort Benning, Georgia. Okay, my name is Cadet Chris Kearns. Graduating in three days here, and I guess the thing I'm going to miss most about West Point is my friends. I'm not going to miss academics at all. I'm not going to miss Sammy's. Uh, I'm looking forward to June 29th. First of all, that's when I'm getting married to my wonderful fiance. And after that, got about a week of leave after that. Then I'm going down to Fort Knox, Kentucky for OBC. And uh, that's when my life's going to start. So I'm looking forward to it. Hi, I'm Cadet Devin Rickey. Um, I'm just really excited about graduation. Looking forward to getting down to Fort Rucker for flight school. I think the thing I'm going to miss the most from here is my friends. Probably not going to miss all the work, but I'll hope to see most of my friends out in the Army. And I'm just really excited, glad to have my family here with me, and uh, looking forward to graduation. I'm Cadet Tommy McDonough, soon to be Lieutenant Tommy McDonough. We're graduating on Saturday. Cam Price is right over there, my good buddy Cameron. I'm the class president, in case you didn't remember. And I just barely made it, thank God, but I made it. Ariba. 
And uh, I really don't have anything else to say except good luck to everybody wherever, wherever your endeavors may take you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name's Cameron Price. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, and we've had many beers down at the first club together. Probably a lot of hours out on the area. I just want all of you to remember that West Point, in the end, is always and always will be and always has been a party school. I'm uh, Adrian Kalam, and I'm from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Uh, I'm going to Fort Bliss, Texas, for the next two or three years. Uh, I'm branching air defense artillery. And uh, what I'm going to miss about West Point is really the great friends that I made, such as uh, Gerald Yap right here, my uh, first semester roommate, Plebe here. Oh, he took the words out of my mouth. I'm going to miss uh, Adrian and not my friends, too. But I'm Gerald Yap, and uh, I'm from Westminster, California. And uh, I'm actually going to the Air Force. It's kind of weird. And uh, going to Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma. <laughs> so uh, good luck, 96. I'm Sarah Snyder. and. I'm going to be graduating like everybody else. These are my parents, and I'm just really excited. It doesn't seem like it's possible, but it's happened so fast. So it's really an honor, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, my name is Kedet Hanna Parikka, and I'm from Finland. And it uh, oh, feels great. It feels awesome. I can't believe four years are over, and we have, what, one and a bad days left? It's yeah. one and a bad now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, <laughs> um, after I graduate, I'm going to go back home, back to Finland, and I'll be working in the Defense Department in the Finnish government, and I mainly deal with the UN issues. Um, I'm going to miss my friends. I'm definitely going to miss them. Hopefully I can be back here one day. I'm Connor Langenegger. It feels great to be graduating. Say hi to the class of 96, and I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, my name is uh, Cadet Sean Dinsmore. And um, I'm really excited about graduating on Saturday. Uh, when I graduate, I'll be heading down to uh, Fort Rucker, Alabama to go to flight school down there. And uh, depending on how, how I do down there, if I get a transition, I'd like to uh, go fly uh, Blackhawks or Apaches for, uh, for the Army in my career. All right, my name is Cadet Mike Jones, and this is my father, Colonel Mike Jones. And I'm just really happy to be getting out of here after four years. And I'm really going to miss my parents and my family, but uh, also the friends that I've made over the past four years. I'm really looking forward to leading soldiers in the Army, though, and I get to do it in a couple of weeks here. So, who are? Hi, I'm uh, Josh Byers from South Carolina. Um, I'm going to Fort Stewart, Georgia after this to be an armor officer, and I'm fired up about it. Um, miss, I'm going to miss my friends the most from West Point. There's uh, there's no bond like uh, the ones we have here going through this experience. And uh, graduation is going to be kind of bittersweet because of that. But I can guarantee you that it will be the happiest day of my life. And uh, I'm just looking forward to finishing this up and moving on in life. It's great to have my family here and uh, just awesome support from them. And um, it's been the Lord and, and them that's gotten me through this place. So fired up and ready to go forward. Go 96. Hi, I'm Kat Sean Cooney. I'm graduating tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to leading flat-bellied, steely-eyed, barrel-chested infantrymen in the future. Looking forward to Ranger School. Looking forward to all those RIs. Looking forward to the Army. This is my girlfriend, Mindy. She's very excited. She's looking forward to meeting all those flat-bellied, steely-eyed, barrel-chested infantrymen that are going to be in the future. Cool. That's about all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nathaniel Scott, Jr. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. I'm the regimental commander for 3rd Regiment, and it's truly been an honor to be at the United States Military Academy. It's truly been a great experience. I'm ready to get back into the regular Army. I'm branched infantry. I'm going to Fort Benning for IOBC and then to Korea. Look forward to getting back out there with true soldiers. Take care. Hi, my name is Stephen Courageous. I'm in Company Charlie 4. Um, I branched aviation. I'm going to miss this place. I'm going to miss my walking my area tours and my restriction, but most of all, I'm going to miss my friends and I look forward to seeing them out in the Army and I would like to wish them the best of luck. Thanks. Hi, my name is Matt Fix. I'm from Richmond, Indiana. Uh, feels great to be graduating finally after uh, four long years. Been four very good years though. I've learned a lot. I chose Armor as my branch so I'll be driving around in tanks for the next few years and my first duty station is Fort Carson, Colorado. So I'm ready to get out there and join the cavalry. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kate Kilbride and I'm uh, class 96, can't wait to graduate, company H3, and um, 
I think I'm going to miss my brothers. I think that's one thing. I have two of them here. One's a cow, one's a, a plebe. And I'm really looking forward to going to Germany and starting to uh, be in the Army and being a lieutenant and just getting out of West Point, that's for sure. Hi, I'm Amy Fuller. And as most of you know, I'm a December grad. But I just wanted to say hello to everybody and good luck out there. I'll be seeing you in about May of next year. I'll be a quartermaster and look, at me, look for me at Fort Hood because I hope to be there. Good luck to you all. The Superintendent's Awards are presented in recognition of outstanding performance in all areas of cadet endeavors. Presenting the streamers is Lieutenant General Howard D. Graves. Established in 1978 in memory of the late Brigadier General John H. Pigman, the Superintendent's Award streamer to the outstanding companies in 1st Regiment are presented to Company D, commanded by Cadet Captain Tom Nagel. Company I, commanded by Cadet Captain Matt Brandt. Established in 1958, in memory of the late Brigadier General George O. Press, the Superintendent's Award Streamer to the Outstanding Companies in the 2nd Regiment are presented to Company A, commanded by Cadet Captain Jason Hester. Company E, commanded by Cadet Captain Joe Gaudu. And Company F, commanded by Cadet Captain Thomas Lucario.
Established in 1966 in honor of the members of the class of 1961 and 1964, the Superintendent's Award Streamer to the Outstanding Companies in the 3rd Regiment are presented to Company D, commanded by Cadet Lisa Harmon. Company E, commanded by Cadet Captain Freddie Ledford. Company F, commanded by Cadet Captain Mike Jones. And Company H, commanded by Cadet Captain Chad Crank. Established in 1966, in memory of the late Lieutenant Colonel Andre G. Bromas, the Superintendent's Award Streamer to the Outstanding Companies in the 4th Regiment are presented to Company A, commanded by Cadet Captain Ryan Honnold. Company D, commanded by Cadet Captain Wilton Hockaday. Company E, commanded by Cadet Captain John Yi. And Company F, commanded by Cadet Captain Max Hillsman. The Outstanding Company Commander Award is awarded annually to the best company commander in each regiment. Presenting the award is Brigadier General Robert St. Ange, Commandant of Cadets. The Outstanding Company Commander Award for the 1st Regiment is awarded to Cadet Captain Jody Ofstein from Butler, Pennsylvania. The Outstanding Company Commander Award for the 2nd Regiment is awarded to Cadet Captain Michael W. Wells from Valrico, Florida. The Outstanding Company Commander Award for the 3rd Regiment is awarded to Cadet Captain Theodore Radke from Springfield, Illinois. The Outstanding Company Commander Award for the 4th Regiment is awarded to Cadet Captain Mark V. LaRoche from Westport, Connecticut. The Arthur H. Truxus Jr. Memorial Trophy, a silver cup, established in 1951 by General D. by Captain Gerald D. Hall, United States Military Academy Class of 1944, in memory of Captain Arthur H. Truxus Jr., who died in battle in Korea in 1950, is awarded annually to the Intramural Champion Cross Country Team. This year's winner is Company F, Fourth Regiment. Accepting the cup for Company F is Cadet Greg Fortier. The Palmer E. Pierce Football Trophy, a silver cup, originally presented to General Palmer E. Pierce, United States Military Academy Class of 1891 by the National Collegiate Athletic Association, was bequeathed by him to the United States Military Academy to be awarded annually to the Intramural Champion Football Team. It was first presented in 1943. This year's winner is Company C, 1st Regiment. Accepting the cup for the for Company C is Cadet Don Prograce. The 
the George Alexander Campbell II Memorial Trophy, a silver cup established in 1949 by the United States Military Academy class of 1951 in memory of their classmate, Cadet George Alexander Campbell II, is awarded annually to the intramural champion basketball team. This year's winner is Company A, 3rd Regiment. Accepting the cup for Company A is Cadet Darren Mills. Tonight in this chapel, for the last time as a class, you are gathered here to say thanks to God for giving you the opportunity to be a part of all of these past four years and of beginning your long road of being a leader of character who will indeed have an effect on your family, the lives of your soldiers, and upon our great nation. Hopefully you will not forget this chapel, as Mother Wood said, where you first pondered if this life was really for you. During those desperately hot summer Wednesday nights and Sundays during Beast, and of course throughout your entire four years. The richness of the West Point experience will perhaps not become a reality in your lives for months to come. Yes, class, you are different because your development has indeed been different. Despite what the media and some people say sometimes, the ring that you wear is a symbol of that difference. However, that difference will only shine through your life if you will nurture it and make it blossom. The Army is eagerly awaiting your arrival, and hopefully you will go there and show them what great soldiers you truly are and begin to make that difference. More important than anything else, however, is something that I think is the greatest treasure that West Point creates by virtue of its rather peculiar nature, and that is the fostering of something called friendship. Every cadet who has ever entered these hallowed walls, and if they have stayed at least four weeks, will, will say this to be true. I would wager that no other college or university in the world creates among you friends like you make here at West Point. All of you will depart this academy on Saturday knowing that for life you will have classmates and friends who will be there to laugh and to cry with you and to live and even to die with you forever. But please remember that you have some friends back here as well. On behalf of the entire staff here at Most Holy Trinity, we bid you farewell. And may God bless each and every one of you. Of all the things that will be expected of you as a West Pointer, leadership, character, fitness, intelligence, people will expect you to be a promise keeper, a person who is true to his or her word. That's what we call integrity. Byron Augsburger told this story, and with this I come to a close. Integrity is that quality of living that is personified in this story about Lieutenant John Blanchard, a young soldier in basic training in Florida in World War II. One evening, he wandered into the Army library and found a book to read. As he worked his way through the book, he became quite impressed, not so much with the contents of the book as much as with the notes that were penciled in the margins. The feminine handwriting showed insight and understanding, as well as a touch of tenderness. He flipped to the front cover of the book and found the name of the previous owner. It was a Miss Hollis Maynell. Blanchard found her address in New York. He wrote a letter to her the next day he was shipped overseas. But for the next 13 months, the two of them corresponded by letter. And during that time, they began to open their hearts to each other. It soon became apparent that they were falling in love with each other. Once he asked her for a picture, but she refused, saying if he really loved her, it wouldn't matter what she looked like. Finally, the day came when they were to meet. They arranged to meet at Grand Central Station 
in New York at 7 p.m. on a particular night. She told him, you will recognize me by the red rose I will be wearing in my lapel. At a minute to seven, the soldier straightened his uniform as people walked toward him, his heart pumping with anxiety and anticipation for this long-awaited meeting. From here on, let me describe what happened in his own words. A young woman was coming toward me. Her figure was long and slim. Her blonde hair lay back in curls from her delicate ears. Her eyes were as blue as flowers. Her lips and chin had a gentle firmness. And in her pale green suit, she was like a springtime come alive. I started toward her, entirely forgetting to notice that she was not wearing a red robe. <laughs> and as I moved in her direction, a small provocative smile curved her lips. Going my way, soldier, she murmured, almost uncontrollably. I made another step closer to her, and then I saw Hollis Maywell. She was standing almost directly behind the girl, a woman well past 40. She had graying hair tucked under a worn hat. She was more than plump. Her thick ankled feet were thrust into low-heeled shoes, but she wore a red rose on the rumpled brown lapel of her coat. The girl in the green suit was walking quickly away. I felt as though I was being split in two. So keen was my desire to follow her, and yet so deep was my longing for the woman whose spirit had truly companioned me and upheld me during these months overseas. And there she stood. Her pale, plump face was gentle and sensible. Her gray eyes had a warm and kindly twinkle. I did not hesitate. My fingers gripped the small, worn, blue leather copy of the book, which was to identify me to her. This would not be love, but it would be something precious, something perhaps even better than love, a friendship for which I had been and must ever be grateful. I squared my shoulders and saluted and held out the book to the woman, even though, while I spoke, I felt choked by the bitterness of my disappointment. I am Lieutenant John Blanchard, and you must be Miss Maynell. I'm so glad we can be here. May I take you to dinner? The woman's face broadened in a tolerant smile. I don't know what this is all about, she answered, but the young lady in the green suit who just went by, she begged me to wear this rose in my coat. <laughs> and she said, if you were to ask me out for dinner, I should tell you she's waiting for you in the big restaurant across the street. <laughs> she said it was some kind of test. <laughs> Lieutenant John Blanchard passed the test. Would you? I guess John and Hollis probably lived happily ever after, all because of their insistence on integrity. And may we as members of the body of Christ likewise pass that test as we demonstrate our integrity in our lives, and in our community. Folks, there will be a cathedral at Fort Benning. And there will be a cathedral at Fort Hood, and Campbell, and Bragg, and Lewis. Not a cathedral made of wood and stone, but a cathedral made of flesh and blood, of men and women who gather together because the grace of God has touched their lives, and they realize that they live to honor Him. There will be a cathedral where God's grace and God's peace will be known. Amen. It has been my privilege to meet
you. I only wish I would have had more than a semester and a few weeks to encounter your experience here and have the unique opportunity to learn from you, as I hope to some extent you have learned from me. You go forward to a military that is spread across the world. Some of you will find yourselves in harm's way in but a few short months. Those are challenges that while you've thought about, it will be much different to experience in the real world. When Moses passed on his mantle of leadership to Joshua, he said two simple words, be strong and of good courage, hazach vermatz. Not strong in the sense of how much you can do in the weight room, but strong in the sense of who you are and what you wish to be. When you combine the leadership skills that you have received here, the academic skills that you have honed over the past four years, with your spiritual connection to your Jewishness, and truly you can bring together in the fullness of what it can mean, strength and good courage. When you are rooted strongly in a spiritual tradition, then when you face the horrors of war, the challenges of leadership, the times in which you're not sure you did what you meant to do or why you're doing what you're doing, when you have that rootedness, when you know where your values are, then your strength is there, your courage is there, and the one on high will be able to help you as you go forward to help others. May all that you have learned, may all the skills that you have developed, may the spiritual intensity of what this evening can be, be part of you as you go forward to great things. Indeed, may you go forward in full strength, full of courage, to do wondrous things for Earth, for this place, the United States Army, and for Judaism. John Connor, I'm in Company B1, class 1996, and I'd like to say hi to my classmates and everybody else out there. We're here at the A-Dance at Thayer Hotel, and the thing that I'm going to miss most about being here at West Point is my teammates and my friends, all the friends that I made here at West Point, and uh, all the friends that I played football with. I'm going to miss the season, I'm going to miss my team, and let's beat Navy all four years in a row again. How's it going? Tony Dedman from Columbia, Maryland. Play soccer and run track. Uh, by far, my most memorable experience is uh, beating Navy and Air Force in uh, both track and soccer. No matter how many times you play them, uh, they're always it always gets uh, tougher and tougher because uh, the competition is the same. They're on an equal level playing field. And, uh, when you leave with the victory, it's just an unequal feeling. My name is Kelly McKechnie, and uh, I played soccer. I'm from Needham, Massachusetts. And uh, I think the thing that got me through this place would be my friends and all the people that we work with here and we work together as a team and comes together and makes us strong and gets us through the all four years. So I'm thankful for all my friends. My name is Joel Davis. I'm in company B4. I was captain of the Army football team. 
1995 season. My most memorable experience was going 99 plus yards to beat Navy in the final game. What I'm going to miss most about this place is the Army football team and all my boys. Hi, I'm uh, <coughs> Cadet Ian Weiner, and I'm from Rockaway, New Jersey, company G4. Uh, I can't say enough about the wonderful experience I've had at West Point, uh, the jewel of North America. And I really just appreciate everything that's happened here. Uh, the uh, hockey team here, great season, 20 wins two years in a row. Uh, that's what I'm most proud of here. I would just like to thank everybody, you know, and uh, the good Lord willing, everything will work out all right in the future. Thank you. All right, how you doing? My name is Joe Triano. I'm a uh, company I-4 from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And uh, probably the thing I'm going to miss most is being on the field against Navy. Um, the best feelings I've had in my life since I've been here have been uh, staying on the field, playing Navy, and being 4-0 doesn't, doesn't hurt either. So. Uh, J.P. Patterson, uh, company I-2, class of 96, uh, played court squad basketball here for three years. Definitely the most memorable moment in my career was beating Navy my senior year. 13 straight losses, and we finally beat him my senior year. And definitely just the camaraderie ship and the friends that I developed on the basketball team and, and throughout my, my career here at West Point. I'd say I would not trade him for the world. Hey, Dan Murphy from uh, Company B4. I'm from Montclair, Virginia. I think definitely the thing I miss the most about uh, West Point is all the friends I made, especially on the core squad teams, the soccer team, all the guys, all the friends I've made. I mean, memories are priceless. I'll never forget those guys. I mean, this place maybe has ups and downs, but those guys are always there for me, and that's what's blue. It's important to me. Hi, my name is Kevin Badger. I'm uh, company I3, Dallas, Texas, and uh, I play core squad soccer. I was co-captain with Dan Murphy, and I would say my most memorable moment was when I scored the uh, first two goals of the Army-Navy game in uh, my senior year, uh, busted my knee and tore cartilage, and we ended up losing. So good and bad moment, but I uh, had a lot of fun years over the past four years with the soccer team, and I'll never forget them. Hello, my name is James Cadet. I'm uh, from Stony Point, New York, and I'm just now completing my uh, first year here at the United States Military Academy. And it's definitely been a very wonderful experience and uh, a trying experience and something that I'm glad to leave, but something that I'm very glad that I came. I would definitely do it again. And I played 150-pound football here, and I was the uh, offensive co-captain. And that, that's a team that really has a distinct honor because we lose weight every week before we play our games. I think my most memorable moment is uh, when we beat Navy my junior year. And uh, we went down to Navy, and we played in front of about 5,000 of their fans. And we went right down there and we beat them. And that's, that's what it's all about when you're here in the Army. You just got to beat Navy. And that was definitely one of my most memorable events here at the Academy. Hello, my name is Lenore Redman. I'm currently in Company B3. And I'm from Thiels, New York. I play softball here at West Point, And I'm graduating in two days. And the thing I will probably miss the most is my friends that are here and some of the good times I've had. They all haven't been good. It's a great privilege to have so many here today as we honor the exceptional young men and women who have distinguished themselves in such an outstanding class. These young men and women represent the best of the best. And we're grateful for the opportunity to recognize their unique accomplishments and contributions with today's awards. Our next award will recognize leadership. Cadet Robert S. Brown is a recipient of the Pershing Sword Award to the graduating cadet first captain and brigade commander. This award was established in 1929 and is presented in the name of the late General Charles G. Charles G. Dawes in commemoration of General John J. Pershing, the first captain of the Corps of Cadets in 1886. Mrs. Carol C. Gregg will make the presentation. Cadet Brown is a recipient of the Association of Graduates Award for the second highest class standing Colonel Peter L. Stromberg will make the presentation. In the 
area of athletic excellence, we recognize the cadet who contributed the most valuable service to athletics during his career as a cadet. Cadet Stephen G. Marshall is a recipient of the Army Athletic Association Trophy. Lieutenant General Graves will make the presentation. Cadet Marshall is the recipient of the Pierce Courier Foster Memorial Award to the best all-around gymnast. Colonel Albert Vanderbush will make the presentation. In the area of athletic excellence, we also recognize the cadet who contributed the most valuable service to athletics during her career as a cadet. Cadet Alexis M. Albano is the recipient of the Army Athletic Association Trophy. Lieutenant General Graves makes the presentation. Cadet, Cadet Albano is the recipient of the Director's Award for the most valuable player on the women's soccer team. Colonel Vanderbush will make the presentation. Cadet John R. Hughes is the recipient of the Major General Francis Denton Green Memorial Award. This award was established in 1929 as a memorial to the late General Green, class of 1870, and is presented to the graduating cadet achieving the highest class standing. Lieutenant Colonel John G. Green will make the presentation. Cadet Hughes is a recipient of the Peruvian Army Award for the highest class standing. Lieutenant General Howard Rodriguez will make the presentation. Cadet Hughes is the recipient of the General Robert E. Wood Distinguished Cadet Award for the highest class standing. Lieutenant General Graves will make the presentation. Cadet Hughes is a recipient of the 77th Infantry Division Reserve Officers Association Award to the cadet who ranks highest academically in national security and public affairs. Colonel Edwin G. Logan will make the presentation. Cadets Hughes and Stephen T. Berry are the recipients of the Bainbridge Reynolds Hayden Family Memorial Award for the highest standing in all history courses. Mrs. Herbert Bainbridge Hayden will make the presentation. Cadet Jeremy D. Johnson is the recipient of the Association of Graduates Award for the third highest class standing. Colonel Stromberg will make the presentation. <laughs> Cadet Matthew C. Purdy is the recipient of the Brigadier General Richard J. Tallman Class of 1949 Memorial Award to the cadet with the fourth highest class standing. Cadet Catherine M. Scott will make the presentation.
march that is being played as the graduating class marches to the center of the plane is the alma mater march. that is being played as the graduating class marches to the reviewing line is Army Blue from the United States Army March.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the graduation parade. Distinguished guests, friends, family, and most importantly, to the West Point class of 1996, welcome to the graduation banquet. My name is Cadet Tommy McDonough, and I am the class president and master of ceremonies for this evening. Now please remain standing as Cadet Joshua McCullough delivers the invocation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight in awe that our time here at the Academy is drawing to a close. Over the past four years, we've made countless requests for your help. Sometimes, we ask you to help us pass the difficult WPR. Other times, it was a PT test. But more often than not, it was just for enough strength to make it through another day. You have responded by sharing us with your love. You have not only pulled us through the rough times, but you have blessed us in ways that we had not expected. Whether it was a supportive family or a close friend, you have reminded us that we are not alone. Lord, we thank you. Lord, please bless us in these last few hours together with our family and friends. Help us to enjoy our time with each other as we complete our time here at West Point. Please continue to bless us and give us wisdom as we go our separate ways. In your name we pray. Amen. In the 194-year history of the Academy, over 53,000 cadets have graduated and joined the Long Gray Line. As this number does not exceed the current enrollment even at many of our nation's other fine colleges, even so, one gains an appreciation of what we have achieved in these four years. One feels that what we have attained is exceptionally special. What we have accomplished is truly amazing. And now I say we, speaking not only to my classmates, but also to the loved ones, the close friends, to anybody who's been a part of a cadet's life. You have also overcome. The sacrifices you have all made to make this evening possible for us have not gone unnoticed. We know now, through our learned appreciation of teamwork in these four years, that we would not march tomorrow to accept our diplomas if you were not always there with us. And on behalf of the class, I thank you all for that. Will you now please charge your glasses and join our classmates in toasts? To the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast to the United States Army. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to propose a toast to the United States Military Academy.
General Reimer's soldiership and scholarship epitomize duty, honor, and country. And I can think of no other officer more appropriate than CR class off in officerhood. So please give a warm welcome to tonight's guest speaker, General Reimer. Thank you, Tom, and thank all of you for that very warm welcome. Secretary and Mrs. Perry, General and Mrs. Graves, General and Mrs. Stroop, the Desperate of the Army, distinguished guests all, members of the staff, of fact, uh, staff and faculty of the United States Military Academy, thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you do every day and throughout the year. Ladies and gentlemen, and most especially, the class of 1996, your families and friends. First of all, let me start off and say congratulations to the class of 96. Job well done. I can tell by talking to the people I... I can tell by the talking to the people I talked to tonight that everybody is very proud of all that you've done. I understand the accomplishments that you have achieved while you've been here at West Point. I would simply tell you that I am very proud of what you've done, and I'm also very proud to have you entering the United States Army when you're commissioned tomorrow. I'll start off by giving you two slogans to remember, platoon leaders up front and give a damn. Let me talk about what each of those means. Platoon leaders up front was a command that grew up between the war years, World War I and World War II. The company commander would maneuver his company until he came to the point of action when he had to deploy it for action, and he would give the command platoon leaders up front. The platoon leaders would come up front because that's where the action was, and they had to lead that platoon. That sent a very powerful message. Platoon leaders and leaders must lead from up front. We no longer use that command in the United States Army today because it has become ingrained as a part of the way we do business. We not only lead from front physically, but we meet, must lead from the front morally. Choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong. Give a damn simply means care for soldiers. Now, if I asked everybody here that's graduating and being commissioned tomorrow, you would all tell me that you care for soldiers. But there's some of you probably searching in your soul and in your gut about what that really means. Let me try to bring it alive. If you go to your first unit, and you go to a PT formation taking place early in the morning, and you get out there and you find the soldiers have been standing out there in the cold, it's in the dead of the winter, and the leaders are back in the boarding room having a cup of coffee and joking. And if that bothers you, and if you do something about it, then you give a damn. If you go out to training, and you find that the leaders are simply reading the book to the soldiers instead of being prepared for the training, and if that bothers you, and if you do something about it, then you give a damn. If you go in your soldiers' barracks and you find that the rooms are in disarray, if you go into the latrines and you find that the water is not running properly, the commode is stopped up, and if that bothers you and you do something about it, then you give a damn. If you go in the mess hall on Sunday night, Sunday evening, and you check the Sunday meal, and you find that the soldiers are being fed leftovers from Saturday afternoon and Friday night so that the mess sergeant can balance the books. And if you, that bothers you, and if you do something about it, then you give a damn. Why do we attach so much importance to caring for soldiers? I think Colonel Albert Jenkins, an infantry colonel in 1961, said it best. He said, to our subordinates, we owe everything that we are or hope to be. For it is our subordinates, not our superiors, who raise us to the dizziest of professional heights. And it is our subordinates who can and will, if we deserve it, bury us in the deepest mire of disgrace. When the chips are down and our subordinates have accepted us as their leaders, we don't need any superior to tell us. We see it in their eyes, we see it in their faces, in the barracks, on the field, and on the battle line. And on that fatal day, when we must be ruthlessly demanding, cruel and heartless, they will rise as one to do our bidding, knowing full well that it may be their last act 
in this life. Those are powerful words, but they're very true. They describe the seriousness of the profession that you are about to enter. As you leave and start on a new and exciting journey, I hope that you will internalize what MacArthur said 34 years ago, duty, honor, country. These three hallowed worlds, words reverently dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. They are your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. My generation will soon pass from the scene. History will show that we have made our mistakes, but I hope history will record that we did our best. Tomorrow you will be commissioned in the best army in the world. It's an exciting time, a time filled with tremendous opportunity and difficult challenges. You will soon be the keeper of the flame. I challenge you to do your best. The Army asks no more, and you can do no less. I envy you, I wish you well, and God bless you and the soldiers that you're about to lead. Thank you very much. General Reimer, sir, wow, what a, what a great speech. So on behalf of the class of 1996 of the United States Military Academy, I want to thank you for your awards. So we'll be sure to take them with us as we enter the Corps officers. So on behalf of the class, I'd like to present you with a small token for what you've done for us tonight. So the cadet statue. So the inscription reads, General Dennis Joe Reimer, Chief of Staff, United States Army, graduation banquet guest speaker, with sincere appreciation, class of 1996, United States Military Academy, 31 May, 1996. Thank you, sir. Thanks, John. Thank you all. Good luck. Will you now please stand, recharge your glasses, and join in one final toast and the benediction. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please bow in prayer with me? Father, we praise you for the many blessings you have given to us, for the family, friends, and loved ones who have supported us, and for the experiences we've shared as a class over the past four years. We know that it is by your grace and mercy that we have made it to this point. We pray that as we leave here, we can be leaders of your army as well as our nations. Guide us and give us your strength. We ask and pray for your glory. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the graduation banquet. The graduation hop follows immediately in Eisenhower Hall with activities on all levels of the building. Please use the utmost care in your travels this evening. To my classmates, I would like to bid you for all tonight with one parting thought. This is something that I hadn't planned on saying, but over the days this week, it occurred to me, spending some time with my closest friends for, for the last time for a while, it occurred to me that so unfortunately, a few of our classmates for tomorrow, for medical reasons, will be wearing their uniform for the last time. And as I sat and thought about that, it also occurred to me that on the same hand, some of our classmates will wear the uniform until their last living moment. So make sure you think about that tonight when you see your classmates for the last time. Thank you very much. For freedom we risk. Good night. <laughs>